Jesus, Mary Stuart, Bloody Mary, this kind of thing. This is Stuart approach. Is a, it was written in, in a wrong way. Now, please don't ask me if the Stuart approach changed the mortality. It doesn't. Nothing changed the mortality or changed the survival. But to me, it's the best way to understand what everybody studied in the separate chapters in the book. Electrolytes, disturbances, and acid-base equilibrium. I think the, the good things of this approach, which is a different way to look at the same reality, is that put the things together. So it allows a more wide comprehension of, of the picture. So if you have a uh, blood gases and you have the electrolytes, uh, you can understand with the two little sheet of uh, papers, uh, I think 80, 90% uh, of the pathophysiological conditions which may harm the life. You have to know what you have in the hands. I do not pretend to explain the Stuart approach. I studied the acid base equilibrium in my life at least two, three months every year in 40, 35, 40 years. So because it's intellectually stimulating, it's not easy, but I hope to raise the curiosity in some of you to look uh, at the things. This, uh, these are the player. We have water. In one liter of water, we have uh, 50,000 millimoles. Then we have strong ions, which are the ions uh, are called strong, where they are always in a given electrical status in uh, solution. So when the sodium loses its own electron in outside shell, it becomes uh, positive. The chlorine keep another electron to complete uh, its outside shell and is always negative. So this is the framework on which uh, the acid-base equilibrium moves. Then we have, uh, in the negative, strong ions, always negative. Then we have the weak acid. I think to understand the concept, they should be called uh, uh, the weak ions. That means are the ions, uh, which are negative, uh, which may be dissociated, that means with one electron taken after releasing a proton or can stay in dissociated. So these are the important player that we study as uh, buffers. And then we have uh, the protons, which is the determinant of the acid basis equilibrium. But look uh, at the order of magnitude. We have, uh, these are nanomoles, 10 minus nine. These are millimoles, 10 minus three. That means for uh, every millions of sodium ions present in the solution, we have only one desperate protons left free. And I think the Stuart approach say, okay, but what's going on? When the people say, we have ex exchanged sodium uh, protons, which is a model. But can you imagine really that uh, through uh, the same hole, you have one and one million in the other part, and they change one to one. So there are little things that cannot be understood. We read the paper, we repeat the things as politicians without really trying to ask uh, why. So Stuart uh, published a little book uh, in which I strongly suggest you to read at least the first four chapters because they uh, are a sort of a beautiful mind. That means a very clear sequence uh, of idea, logical, and reasoning. And you say, okay, what is determined? The independent variables for the acid basis equilibrium are the difference between strong ions that you can call between a strong basis and strong acid. 
plus and minus. The nomenclature changed over the, over the decades, but the concept is the same. The PCO2, which is nothing else than a weak acid, which is the carbonic acid, and the amount of the other B, uh, weak acids, protein, phosphate, and the hemoglobin in the blood, which is called is called. Now, just try to look here. You have has to look uh, at the paint. Huh? You have a big paint. Now, if you look in the traditional way of the acid basis equilibrium, so the Henderson Hessebel equation, is as to see just a little part of the painting. Here you have the complete picture. You have the plus. They stay as the Hercules column. And they do not participate to any biochemical reaction. They can only be eliminated, uh, basically primarily by the kidney. Then we have the minus. And the other column is the chlorine ion. And what we have studied as a buffer base and the sonesaba is played in this space in which we have uh, the weak acid. Now, weak means weak. Let's see, if I add a strong ion, so dissociated, negative, to this picture, as an example, lactic acid, lactic acid has a pH of 3.8. That means every 4,000 dissociated lactate, I have one indissociated molecule of uh, lactic acid. If I add uh, this strong ion, this column, the strong column, rise up. And uh, this column, the buffer base, which is called 100 years ago buffer base, goes down. What was called buffer base now is called uh, weak acid in the Stewart approach. And if uh, the buffer base decrease of 10, what will be the base excess? Which was introduced in his scholar thesis by Sigar Anderson. If my buffer base normal is 42 millimoles per liter, if they decrease because the strong wins, so the biocarbonate becomes CO2, the uh, phosphate from three becomes minus two, so they disappear as a weak acid, the base excess will be minus 10. And the strong ion difference, what will be? Let's see if I have a normal 42, I add 10 here, Buffer base decrease by 10. So become from 42 to 32. Base excess, which is nothing else than the normal buffer basis minus the actual buffer basis. Actual buffer base has 32. Normal is 42, 32 minus 42 becomes equal to minus 10. So the buffer base is this one. And the strong ion difference is minus 10. So the strong ion difference can be seen as uh, uh, the strong bion, uh, uh, maybe see, it's just as the buffer base, nothing, nothing else really. So when I add in metabolic acidosis, I add uh, here 10. Normal buffer base is 42, is biocarbonate plus protein, dissociated. They become undissociated, and my colon of the strong ions goes up. Strong ion difference becomes 32. Base excess becomes 32. Now, here, up to here, we have uh, the hydroxylion. And you know that the product of hydroxylion and the protons is constant. Now, the space for this uh, is decreased, that means uh, the protons increase, and is the generation of acidosis. Now, in a respiratory acidosis, at the beginning, immediately, 
the framework of the strong ions doesn't change. Why should change the potassium and chlorine? You have to, to play with kidney. So everything happens in the domain of the buffer basis. If I increase one, which is biocarbonate, any time I increase the CO2, the bicarbonate goes up. If I increase this one, I have less space for the dissociated proteins and less space for the hydroxyl ion. As these are related to the protons, the protons concentration goes up and I have the respiratory acidosis. In the nature, I don't have the time, I don't have time to get into, but what does uh, the nature to restore the pH? When you have a metabolic acidosis, uh, even now, you know, the people ask you, what uh, biocarbonate, great. Now, what is biocarbonate? It's, uh, it's not the biocarbonate alone, it's a sodium biocarbonate. So when we put biocarbonate in a solution, we give a strong positive ions and biocarbonate, which is a weak negative ions. In the bottles, they are in equilibrium. But in the body, the things may change because the weak acid may be metabolized, may become in part CO2, may be excreted, so we have uh, the sodium left. And the increase of pH when we add biocarbonate implies, must imply, that the biocarbonate is eliminated. If you are in cardiac, not you, I hope not. If somebody is in cardiac arrest and uh, I cannot transfer the biocarbonate to the lung, I cannot eliminate the biocarbonate as a CO2 from the lung, uh, the pH does not change. If you take in vitro a bottle of blood and you add sodium biocarbonate, the pH does not change. To change the pH by biocarbonate, you need to modify your transport to the lung and elimination of biocarbonate in form of CO2. And, uh, what does, uh, what is the key electrolyte for the acid-base equilibrium is the chlorine. Because let's see, I have these two columns, sodium and uh, chlorine. Now with the sodium, if you have uh, 160 of sodium, you get worried, right? If you have 155 of sodium, well, you get worried, osmolarity, dehydration, uh, so it's something uh, important. Let's see, if you have 90 or 110 of chlorine, do you worry? No, you don't even know. Because uh, I strongly believe that the chlorine electrolyte uh, is measured for aesthetic reasons. That means when you have in the records and hole of the chlorine, well, it's better Ask also the chlorine, and nobody cares about the chlorine, which is the key electrolytes for uh, the nature. When uh, we have, as an example, respiratory acidosis, uh, okay, this, uh, the pH goes down because the biocarbonate goes up, this one <coughs> goes down, no space, and the protons goes up. pH is low. What the natural thing? The doctor tried to rise up uh, this column, increasing sodium, which is very strictly regulated by, uh, by, the, by the body. The nature doesn't. The nature starts immediately to excrete uh, chlorine. But yeah, to excrete chlorine without sodium, of course. So what the nature invented? To rid off of chlorine, that means to increase uh, the buffer base to restore the pH, uh, saving the sodium, invented uh, the ammonium. Immediately the kidney start to produce uh, a positive electrolyte 
to be excreted with a negative electrolyte, which is a chloride, to maintain the, electri the electrical charge, saving sodium. So if you take a patient and you increase, decrease the ventilation, and you measure the chlorine after five minutes, try to look what's happening in the urine. If you measure the ammonia, you see that after five, 10 minutes, the ammonia starts to rise up, the chlorine starts to rise up, which is the natural way to handle, to react to acidosis. One practical thing, what I say is a very useful for understanding. Because uh, it put together electrolytes and uh, acid-base equilibrium. One of the mysteries of my life uh, was, uh, the, as an example, the metabolic alkalosis, which is very frequent in intensive care. If you go to measure in, our, in all our patients in intensive care, we found a 50% of metabolic alkalosis, which is usually due to an uh, excessive use of diuretics, because everybody loves to see 100, 110 milliliters of urine per hour. Why? For aesthetic reason, for old tradition, we, do, we don't urinate 100 milliliters per hour. But we oblige the patient and we give uh, fluids uh, to maintain the urinary flow and not the vice versa. Anyway, the results, uh, the patient getting alkalosis. And it's extremely difficult to understand without Stuart why the diuretics causes alkalosis. This was one of the mysteries of my life when I tried to understand exactly. And if you read a lot of the place, and the protos goes up uh, and uh, potassium went down. But look at the order of magnitude. Sodium is the concentration which is one millionth greater than uh, protons, which is determining the pH. So something doesn't work. And what's about uh, the physio, what we call saline, or physiologic solution? We have 150 for chlorine, 154 sodium. So the electrical charge are balanced, and uh, uh, we use the saline uh, since uh, decades, and the saline had the great merits. However, we know that when we put saline in great amount, remember the amount in a patient, in this study, the net infusion in a few hours was a something of four or five liters. Input minus output. That means a dilution of the extracellular space of about 20-30%. And what they found, that you sodium, sodium chloride, you get acidosis. Now, where the proton come from? They don't come from, from chloride. They don't come from some sodium. But everybody say is a metabolic hyperchloremic acidosis. In fact, you have acidosis, and you have a greater amount of chlorine. But you didn't give chlorine acid. You give sodium chloride. Try to explain without Stuart this one. It's almost impossible. And now try to follow me in the next few steps. When I was asked to make one conference about the, the strong ion difference, the effect on infusion, I say pencil, a paper, a little book, uh, and a computer. OK, try to see what will happen theoretically using a series of equations if I give a strong ion difference of solution with a strong ion difference of zero as a saline of 10, 20, 30. Be careful. When we say, as an example, the Ringer lactate, the strong ion difference is 29, 28, 29, which is the amount of lactate. This may be true in men after the lactate is gain. In the bottle, the strong ion difference is zero. We don't have a battery. It's a bottle of Ringer lactate. Okay? Because the electrical charges, positive and negative, are equal. 
When you put in the blood uh, or in the body, lactate uh, is heated very rapidly and the sodium, excess sodium is left. So we call a strong ion difference between the difference of the strong ions, the weak acid associated to maintain the electron neutrality of the solution, when it be lactate, may be malate, fumarate, acetate, biocarbonate, gone. And you are left with a strong ion difference. No. If I use 20, 30, 40, 50, and you know, there is one magic point in which whatever is the dilution, that means 20%, 30%, what's that? 40%, whatever is the dilution, the pH does not change. And this is curious. Why? Always ask why. So there is one theoretical point. If I give uh, three tons of that solution, at the end I measure the pH, the pH is uh, equal to the baseline pH if the PCO2 is maintained at constant level. So we reproduce this experiment, not a pencil and paper, but with a tonometer, so the machine in which you put the solution, you can equilibrate with different gases. You may add, measure the pH, PO2, PCO2, blah, blah. So you can do in uh, ex vivo experiments, and you can see also here there is a, a point uh, in which uh, the pH is equal to the pH, the starting pH. Now, 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 try to follow me with attention. If I take everybody, what we have? We have a CO2 equal to 40, okay? I need three minutes of very great attention if you keep this point. And now our biocarbon in the blood is 45, uh, excuse me, 25, 24, 25, 24.8, okay? And the biocarbon is the dependent variables, depend by many things. Now let's see, I take uh, a water on the street, distilled water, and I take a CO2, I start to bubble CO2 in that water, and my CO2 has a PCO2 of 40. And I go to measure the biocarbonate, to compute the biocarbonate in that solution. How much I will find? Pure water and CO2. You may say, 24, 20. I asked several experts, no? my computer refined, well, well, I don't know. Now, try to think, I may have lower, equal higher, but try what's happened in a pure water. I put the CO2, part of the CO2 meet with the water molecule, if they have energy sufficient, become carbonic acid, and I produce the carbonic acid dissociate immediately, I have one proton and one molecule of biocarbonate, which are equal in concentration, okay? The reaction stop uh, when the equilibrium is reached. And the equilibrium, look here, is reached. Uh, these are PCO2, 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Look at the biocarbonate. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, at 120 of PO2, we have 0, 0, 5 millimoles, nothing. 0, 0, in the blood we have 24, 25. Why? Because we have the strong ion difference. You have to fill this gap. Let's see that in this, my distilled water, okay, I put the CO2, and I add uh, a positive charges uh, of uh, sodium hydroxide, up to 25. Any time a proton is dissociated, uh, recombine with the water until the biocarbonate uh, is equal to the strong ion difference, okay? In the blood, they have also the protein, but the concept is very simple. This is zero in water, five, 10, 15, 20 of biocarbonate. Now, 
Try to understand this one. You are in surgical theater. You have a battle of solution. And uh, you need uh, to transfuse a lot of fluids. You have uh, a saline, okay? The saline has a strong uh, ion difference, which is zero, which is definitely lower than the biocarbon concentration. You always will get acidosis. But take one step back. Let's see I give an infinite amount of solution to my patient, okay? And uh, this solution has, uh, I don't change the PCO2, and uh, this uh, solution has a strong ion difference, uh, as, excuse me, the strong ion difference equal to the biocarbonate concentration at baseline. I have a patient, 25, okay? I gave an infinite dilution with a strong ion difference of 25. The protein concentration disappear, the PCO2 stay constant, any time I put the PCO2, biocarbon is formed until I reach 25. So, if the solution I give, the strong ion difference, is equal to the biocarbon at baseline, I will not change the pH at all. If it's lower, the pH go down. If it's higher, the pH goes up. Let's see, I have a patient with Ringer lactate and I have a patient in metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, which is 33 of biocarbonate. I give Ringer lactate, the pH goes down. I have a patient with 22 of biocarbonate. I give lact Ringer lactate, which is 29, the PCO2 goes up. I have a patient with 29 biocarbonate, I give lactate, PCO, uh, the pH stay exactly the same. And this, I don't have time, has been shown in uh, vitro, in experiments, in animal. This is just uh, one uh, little example of uh, how there is the interplay between strong ions, electrolytes, and pH. Don't save the life, but help to understand what's going on. And when you understand the mechanism and you may fix something in the mechanism, the improved survival is a beneficial side effect. Thank you for the attention.